Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 52. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with drive-by-wire throttle control. We're going to find that drive-by-wire throttle control is relatively complex. We have four different throttle position sensors and we need to set up on our analog inputs. We have two outputs to control the servo motor to actually make the throttle plate open or close on the drive-by-wire throttle body. We have our proportional, integral, and derivative type gains to allow the output to control to the target that we're programming and our drive-by-wire target table. We also have a lot of other programming configuration details to account for, such as idle control, for example. We're gonna be integrating drive-by-wire throttle control into our idle routine. We're gonna cover all of this in this training tutorial. Let's jump in here so we can check out how to work with drive-by-wire throttle control. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our drive-by-wire throttle control and tuning within our Max ECU applications. We'll find that drive-by-wire gives us a huge amount of advantages over mechanical base throttle control. We'll find a mechanical base, we have a, a throttle cable that's connected to our throttle body itself and to the gas pedal in the car. When we push the gas pedal, it'll open up the throttle plate in a relatively linear manner, and we'll find that we have relatively simple control. But when we're dealing with drive-by-wire, it opens up the window for virtual programming control, and we can have a linear or unlinear relationship between our actual gas pedal in the car and our throttle plate opening at the engine. There's a lot of advantages to that. We'll talk about programming those and those advantages later on in the video. But let's start off the video here talking about the fundamentals of how the drive-by-wire throttle control works and understanding the inputs and outputs and the setup configuration in our Max ECUs. I'm going to be going through in this training tutorial setting up everything from scratch. You may be dealing with a plug-and-play application where this is all accounted for you already in the base map and the wiring harness from Max but we still need to understand the fundamentals. You can still go back in and check all of their calibration details to make sure it's 100% so that when you're dealing with uh, the drive-by-wire control, it's gonna work exactly as expected. So let's break this down. Then we're gonna find that we have a drive-by-wire throttle body and we have our accelerator pedal that's gonna be in the car. And we'll find that there's not gonna be a, a, a cable between them. There's gonna be this essentially electronic control. And we'll find that on the drive-by-wire itself, it's going to have two throttle position sensors and on the accelerator pedal we have two throttle position sensors they're gonna have a main and a backup and we'll find we have that redundancy there in case one fails the max still knows what's going on so that it can control the drive-by-wire um, properly we don't have a, a throttle runaway and crash our car there's always the safety aspect to dealing with drive-by-wire so we'll find two throttle position sensors at the drive-by-wire two at the actual acceler accelerator pedal position that we put our foot on or the gas pedal in the car. Now what actually moves the throttle body is going to be a servo motor control. And the servo motor can be manipulated in either a positive or a negative direction. When we're dealing with generally a servo motor in the positive direction, that means it's going to be in the forward movement or opening the actual throttle uh, in, in opening the plate. And then we want to close the plate, that's going to be the negative direction in the servo motor control. So we're going to have two outputs to control the positive or negative aspect of the servo motor to actually make the throttle plate open when command it. And then we have our four inputs to deal with for the actual throttle position sensors. So we need to go and set those up first. That's the, the basic details here in, in, in getting started with drive-by-wire. So this is, again, custom application. We're not going to have anything supported here from Max. Everything is all custom wire, and we're going to be going through it from start to finish, making sure everything is accounted for. So we need to go and set up our inputs and outputs. That's going to be the very first step. And what we're going to do here is jump into our start menu, and we're going to go down here and account for, under inputs, under the analog inputs, all of the throttle position sensors have to be defined and we have to calibrate them. Let's first define them here in our inputs. Now my analog input five through eight here is what I have used on my race box, for my Max ECU, that's the box I'm working with. That's where I've defined my throttle position sensor inputs. So what I have here is my analog input five, analog input six, that's associated with my throttle position sensors on my drive-by-wire itself. That's going to be my main and my backup. Let's go and set these up real quick. So we're gonna to go to our analog input five. In my case, the description here will be DBW, that's my drive-by-wire, that's the actual throttle plate itself, TPS, and we can call this main. This is gonna be my main zero to five volt signal input. And this is the exact same way we'd find a normal throttle position sensor on a mechanical throttle body. We only have one throttle position sensor in that case. In this case, with drive-by-wire, we have four total throttle position sensors. So this is our first one, drive-by-wire, TPS, main. And this is going to be used as a 0 to 5 volt input. Now here under the analog input class, we're going to be using our drop down. And we're going to find that we have various choices that we can choose 
in terms of the position sensor uh, definitions. So what we're looking for here is our E throttle one position main. This signifies that it's gonna be our throttle position sensor on the drive-by wire itself. We do have our throttle two, throttle twos for a second drive-by wire throttle control. We're only using one drive-by wire uh, throttle body itself. And then we find down here we have our pedal position. That's gonna be left up to some of the other definitions as we're finding some of the other things we've wired in here. So I wanted to find this as my throttle position main because this is the main TPS sensor for my pedal assembly. So we've defined the class. We don't need to do anything with the input settings here, the filter or sensor supply tracking or the error detection. We can find once we start to work with the drive-by wire throttle control, have it separate tracking that it can do on its own to verify that the circuit's going to be valid. So we want to define it here. We've defined that. Now on my analog input six, this is going to be my backup to my drive-by wire TPS. So there's always a main and a backup. The main is gonna be um, the primary zero to five volt. It's gonna go from low to high. And then the backup is gonna be the inverse of that. So it's gonna go from high to low. They track in an inverse relationship to each other. That's how every drive-by wire assembly is gonna be essentially functioning, whether it's gonna be Excel pedal or drive-by wire TPS movement. And we'll find that we have a main and a backup. Main is gonna be typically traditional low to high volt. Backup is gonna be a high to low volt. So in this case, we'll say our description here, and we can call this DBW, and then we can say uh, TPS, and we can say backup. And then it is a zero to five volt class here. We have to choose that as our E throttle one position backup. So we'll go and select that. Uh, don't need anything with our in Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.